Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, look into what we will be doing in this session. Uh, in the last class, whatever we have done is that we are looking into the gel layer polarization, uh, gel layer controlling uh, membrane based filtration processes. And as you are, as you are aware, that in the last lecture, I have told that gel can be formed in a system by two ways the filtration may be osmotic pressure controlled in uh, initially and then it can convert into converted into the gel pol polarization range or there may be some solutes which will be forming a gel layer from the very beginning of the filtration for process. For example, a naturally occurring gelling agent like pectin, polyvinyl alcohol and things like that. So, we have seen the steady state uh, gel layer polarization model using the film theory and then we have also seen that in a, the, in a realistic situation, how the gel layer grows in time and permeate flux declines as a function of operating conditions and we have seen its modeling as well. Now, in that modeling, we have taken uh, a close similarity to the classical filtration theory and using the filtration theory, we have modeled the gel layer control filtration where permeate flux goes down as a function uh, as a, you know varies as a function of operating time of filtration. Now, there were several parameters, those were you know appearing in the gel controlling filtration model. So, uh, these among these parameters, the major parameters were gel controlling, uh, you know, gel layer concentration number one, then another is the specific gel layer resistance alpha, third one is the uh, porosity of the gel, uh, uh, particle diameter of the gel forming material and gel layer density. So, we have already seen how gel concentration will be evaluated, we have already seen how alpha the specific gel layer resistance will be evaluated from the uh, from, from by conducting an experiment, separate experiment in an unstart batch cell. And in this class, we will be looking into how epsilon g and d p will be connected and estimated. Because this will be connected, connected because as I, as I have already talked earlier that in membrane based filtration process, we will not be looking into the hot spheres where the particles of defined diameter d p and they will be forming a uh, cake type or gel type layer over the membrane surface. Will be, we may be having a polymeric solution, we may be having a polysaccharide solution which will be equivalent and they, this, may, this may not be defined as an well defined particle hot spheres or particles. So, they will be forming a gel whose resistance will be equivalent to a resistance offered by the particle diameter d p. So, that is the idea. So, let us let us look how to uh, as how we can estimate um, the gel porosity and gel forming par diameter of the gel forming particle. If d p is particle diameter in its molecular level, then volume of one molecule is V 0 and this is pi by 6 d p cube. Then volume of one mole will be n a times pi by 6 d p cube, where n a is the Avogadro number. Now, number of moles in 1 meter cube solution is 10 to the power 3 C g by m w. C g is the gel layer concentration, m w is the molecular weight. So, this is nothing but gel concentration in k g per meter cube and m w is the solute molecular weight. 
and uh, thus the volume of gel volume of gel in 1 meter cube solution becomes 10 cube C g by m w n a pi by 6 d p cube. Thus, one can one can get the gel porosity porosity as epsilon g is equal to 1 minus 10 cube C g m w n a pi by 6 d p cube. Now, now you one can one can get the combine the specific gel layer resistance. Um, uh, now, now we know the um, uh, alpha the specific gel layer resistance can be obtained from Kozni Karman's equation as 1 minus epsilon g divided by epsilon g cube d p square rho g multiplied by 180. And we know how alpha is varying as a function of alpha 0 multiplied by delta p to the power n. As we have described earlier that we will be conducting the experiments in a un, in an unstarred batch cell and from the uh, plot of T by V versus V data, we can get the value of specific gel layer resistance alpha from the slope of the curve and, and uh, then we will be conducting these experiments for different transmembrane pressure drop and can generate the correlation of alpha as a function of delta p. So, we can equate these two and finally, we will be getting alpha naught delta p to the power n is equal to 1 minus epsilon g divided by epsilon g cube d p square times rho g into 180. So, this will be giving me an equation. The second equation I will be getting from definition of epsilon g 1 minus 10 to the power 3 C g by m w n a pi by 6 d p cube. So, this this gives me second equation. So, first equation connects me the variation of gel layer dense gel layer porosity and gel, gel, gel forming particle with the specific gel layer resistance. So, left hand side will be completely known for a particular delta p and the second equation gives me a fundamental relationship between the uh, uh, particle de, uh, the gel porosity and the particle diameter. So, one can solve these two equations by using Newton Raphson's method iteratively. iteratively and can guess you can get an uh, get an idea for different transmembrane pressure drop what are the values of epsilon g and d p. Okay. So, as for different values of delta p we can get we can solve these two equations simultaneously and we can get the values of uh, gel porosity and gel forming particle. If we really do that then we will be finding out that as the transmembrane pressure drop increases gel porosity decreases this decreases. Uh, as delta p increases, gel porosity decreases and gel becomes denser and particle diameter will be also decreasing, particle diameter will be also decreasing. So, this will be giving you an idea how the, the that this particular gel of you know highly viscous gel will be corresponding to the uh, gel that is forming of uh, equivalent hard spheres of diameter d p. So, this way the gel layer density and uh, uh, gel, gel layer porosity and gel forming de, 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 uh, you know particle diameter of the gel forming particle equivalent particle will be obtained for different operating conditions here the operating condition will be delta p that is the transmembrane pressure drop similarly so what is what is left the the, the it is uh, the only parameter that is left unestimated is gel layer density rho g and gel layer density is obtained by uh, uh, by assuming uh, the by making the particles to be solid and then evaluating their density one can get the gel layer density and typically this particle the, the density of this particles will be slightly higher than the water density around 1050 1050 uh, 1050 uh, 1050 kg per meter cube 
or around 1100 kg per meter cube. Okay. This can be you know uh, with, with some of the experimental conditions, this can be used as an optimizing parameter as well and then it can be evaluated um, uh, and then can be incorporated in the model which will be used as a predictive mode. So, th so th these are the various ways the different parameters of a gel layer controlling model can be estimated. So, we have looked into the estimation of gel layer concentration, we have looked into the estimation of specific gel layer resistance gel layer um, uh, e the equivalent diameter of gel forming material as well as the gel porosity. So, that completes the gel layer controlling filtrator filtration only one thing is left that is the um, uh, if we go for a two dimensional model in the gel layer that will also be useful and sometimes it will be very very useful in order to get the estimation of permeate flux. So, two dimensional model of mass transfer boundary layer. So, as we have discussed earlier that one dimensional model. So, till now we have done. So, this is a gel, gel layer form uh, you know formation and the and we, we are we are assuming a constant thickness of uh, solutes is forming over the membrane surface. So, this is the gel layer, this is the membrane. The, so, this is the membrane. This the next layer is gel layer. Next one is the mass transfer boundary layer. So, the the model that we have just discussed is the thickness of the mass transfer boundary layer is constant as we have seen earlier in one this so this is nothing but the features of the one dimensional model as we have discussed earlier that this one dimensional model suffers from a uh, from an under prediction of the permeate flux because uh, if we consider at in, a, in an actual scenario, the mass transfer boundary layer is really developing a, a in the system we are talking about, because we are dealing with the solutes which will be having higher size and very low diffusivity, high speed number and since the entrance length of the uh, you know uh, entrance length of the mass transfer boundary layer is L e by d is equal to 0 0.05. Reynolds times bed number, since we are, we are having a system of high speed number, its entrance length will be very high. So, therefore, most of the cases in the channel, the uh, mass transfer boundary layer will be developing. So, uh, in case of one dimensional model, since we will be considering the actually the constant thickness of mass transfer boundary layer, which will be basically appearing at the end of the you know uh, actual boundary layer probably after several meters in the downstream. So, we will be overlooking the initial portion of the uh, mass transfer boundary layer where we will be getting higher permeate flux. Therefore, in a one dimensional model we will be always under predicting the permeate flux. In order to avoid that one can also go for a two dimensional model for uh, gel layer forming uh, gel controlling filtration. Now, let us look into that. So, in two dimensional model it this will be the um, uh, membrane let us say. then there will be a formation of gel layer and then the mass transfer boundary layer will be growing like this instead it will be a instead of a, a constant. So, therefore, so the in this case this is the membrane, this is the gel and this is the mass transfer boundary layer and where delta will be essentially a function of x in this case. Okay. So, so this is the two dimensional model and in case of one dimensional model the permeate flux is remaining constant all the time. In case of two dimensional model uh, we will be having initially the higher permeate flux followed by decreasing it gradually then it remains constant. So, therefore, we are, we are you see in the in the one dimensional model we are considering the same flux throughout and in the case of two dimensional model we are basically doing the actual scenario. So, in one dimensional model we were not estimating or we are not accounting for this amount of flux. So, one dimensional mo model always under predicts the permeate flux. Therefore, let us solve the two dimensional model and what will be doing? 
we will be fixing up coordinate system here at the end of the gel layer where the mass transfer boundary layer starts growing because uh, gel layer with mass transfer boundary layer will be always attached to the immobilized, immobilized gel layer. Okay. So, uh, mass transfer boundary layer we write down the solute balance equation balance within mass transfer boundary layer. And as usual, the at the steady state, u the equation is u del c del x plus v del c del y is equal to d del square c del y square, with the same argument that we have we have done earlier that u will be basically the linear. So it's a case of developing mass transfer boundary layer and fully developed hydrodynamic or velocity boundary layer. So we will be within the mass transfer boundary layer, we will be considering a fraction of you know velocity boundary layer. So, at that part of the you know parabolic profile will be linear in the within the mass transfer boundary layer. So, we will be linearize the, the mass trans the velocity profile and the linearized portion will be coming out to be expression will be coming out to be 3 u 0 y by h and within the small you know close to the wall because the mass transfer boundary layer will be extremely small v will be uh, almost approximated as minus v w. So, the equation becomes 3 u 0 y by h minus del c del x minus v w del c del y is equal to d del square c del y square. Now, we make this system non dimensional from the very beginning. Uh, so, y star will be y by h let us say x star will be x by l where h is the half height of the channel, l is the length of the uh, module. Uh, c star is equal to c by c naught, c naught is the fit concentration. So, let us see what we get. So, this becomes 3 u 0 y star del c star l del x star minus v w divided by h del c star del y star is equal to d over h square del square c star del y star square. So, let us multiply both side by h square by d. So, what you will be getting is 3 u 0 h square over uh, d l y star del c star del x star minus v w h over d del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Now, we replace h over d by 4 equivalent diameter that we have already derived in the class earlier. So, uh, it becomes 3 by 16 u 0 d square by d l y star del c star del x star minus v w d e by d times 4 del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Now, we identify that u 0 d square by d l is nothing but a non dimensional number Reynolds Smith d by l, where Reynolds is defined uh, on uh, equivalent diameter and v w d by d will be nothing but the non dimensional permeate flux that is the E w. So, if we really put that in the governing equation, let us see what you get. We will be getting 3 by 16 Reynolds Smith d by l. y star del c star del x star minus 1 by 4 p w del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Okay. So, this is my governing equation. Now, let us see what are the boundary conditions. Boundary condition would be at x equal to 0 uh, c star c is equal to c naught that means, at x star equal to 0 c star will be 1 at y is equal to 0 we will be having v w c plus d del c del y will be equal to 0. The total flux towards the membrane equal to 0 this is the convective flux towards the membrane 
diffusive flux or solute away from the membrane at y is equal to 0, c is equal to c g. So, with the boundary with the non dimensional form y star equal to 0, uh, p w c g star. Okay, let us let us make it non dimensional that will be important v w c g star plus d by h del c star del y star equal to 0. So, this becomes v w h over d c g star plus del c star del y star equal to 0. So, we will be having del c star del y star plus h is d by 4. So, 1 by 4 p y p w by 4 c g star is equal to 0. So, this will be the, the non dimensional form of the boundary condition at y star equal to 0 and at y star y is equal to delta c is equal to c naught. So, therefore, at y star is equal to delta star c star is equal to 1. So, this three condition defines the uh, de de defines the um, you know, boundary conditions for the governing equations. And now, we will be, we'll be demonstrating this problem how to solve using the integral method of solution. So, it is also known as the approximate integral method of the solution. Most of the all the boundary layer problems can be solved the approximate integral method why this method is called an approximate method, because in this case we are going to assume uh, a, 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 a concentration profile, which will be confirming the physical boundary conditions of the mass transfer boundary layer. And then we will be putting the, that particular profile into the governing equation and see what are the, uh, how, how the system behavior will evolve. Now, what is the, why we are not doing a similarity solution here? We, we can do the problem by using similarity solution, but we are doing the integral method analysis, because it is another way of solu solving the boundary layer problems. The only advantage here you will be getting is that, if you remember that the for the sim in the similarity solution, we have assumed that at y is equal to infinity, c is equal to c naught, because we are assuming that um, uh, we, are, we, are, we are changing the condition from y is equal to delta to um, uh, at, c at y equal to delta c is equal to c naught to y equal to infinity c is equal to c naught, because the delta is really very small and majority of the channel beyond the mass transfer boundary layer, which will be equivalent to infinity c is equal to c naught. But in this case, we, will be, we can retain the boundary condition that at y is equal to delta c is equal to c naught. So, therefore, uh, that will be an advantage of this of this method of uh, solution, but the approximation is the approximated assumption of the concentration profile that will be prevailing within the mass transfer boundary layer. So, now let us try to find out what is that uh, concentration profile. We assume a concentration profile, a parabolic one or second order c star is equal to c by c naught is equal to a 1 plus a 2 y star by del star plus a 3 y star by del star square of that. So, why we are talk, taking a second order polynomial? Because we know that three conditions this concentration profile must satisfy. What are the three conditions? The first condition is at y equal to 0, c must be is equal to c g, gel layer concentration. At y is equal to delta, the, the two conditions I was uh, talking about in the, uh, uh, in the earlier class, that at least two conditions, the boundary layer conditions must be satisfied by any kind of boundary layer, whether it is a hydrodynamic boundary layer, thermal or mass transfer boundary layer. These are the conditions at the edge of the boundary layer. At the edge of the boundary layer, value of the dependent parameter will be equal to the free stream con uh, condition and value and, and gradient of the dependent variable will be equal to 0. That means, at y star is equal to 0, my c star is equal to c g star, that is c g by c naught and at y star is equal to delta star, c star will be equal to 1, that means, c is equal to c naught and y star is equal to delta star, del c star, del y star equal to 0. So, I have three basic conditions that this mass transfer boundary layer should satisfy and the, therefore, I will be having three terms with three unknown coefficients a 1, a 2, a 3. So, three terms means it will be maximum a second order polynomial. 
So, that is why we have considered a second order polynomial. So, next we will be using these three boundary conditions in order to evaluate the unknown coefficients a 1, a 2 and a 3. Once these coefficients are evaluated, then we will be getting the complete concentration profile within the mass transfer boundary layer. So, let us do that. Do that. So, first boundary condition will give you C g star is equal to a 1. So, the profile becomes now C star is equal to C g star plus a 2 y star by del star plus a 3 y star by del star square. So, now let us put the other boundary that at uh, second boundary condition. So, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, we have utilized already 1. So, now from 2 we will be getting 1 is equal to C g star plus a 2 plus a 3. So, a 2 plus a 3 becomes C g star minus 1 and from 3 we will be getting del C star del y star equal to 0. So, a 2 uh, at y star equal to del star. So, a 2 by del star plus 2 a 3 del star by del star square evaluated at del star. So, this will be equal to 0. So, you will be getting a 2 is equal to minus 2 a 3. So, therefore, uh, using these two we will be getting the a 2 and a 3 and if you really do that. So, you will be getting uh, a 2, a 2 I am writing minus 2 a 3 plus a 3 is equal to C g star minus 1. So, therefore, you will be getting uh, a 3 equal to So, uh, the, the first boundary condition we had C g star plus is equal plus a 2 plus a 3 is equal to 1. So, a 2 plus a 3 would have been minus C g star plus 1 and a 2 is equal to minus 2 a 3. So, minus 2 a 3 plus a 3 is equal to minus C g star plus 1. So, therefore, a 3 will be C g star minus 1. Once we get a 3, then we can get a 2 is equal to uh, minus 2 a 3. So, minus 2 C g star minus 1. So, we completely estimate the concentration profile C star is equal to uh, C g star plus a 2, a 2 is minus 2 C g star minus 1 y star by del star plus a 3, a 3 is C g star minus 1 y star by del star square of that. So, we have determined the concentration profile, the parabolic concentration profile within the mass transfer boundary layer. So, in the next what will be do, what we are going to do is that we will be taking the derivative of this and inserting into the governing equation to replace the derivative in terms of the, the del c del x, del c del y and del square c del y square from this you know concentration profile. Then we will be inserting those into the governing equation and then we will be integrating across the mass transfer boundary layer. Thank you very much.